Hi everyone and welcome to my place. I have had a request from Zoe Hanley from the UK wanting to know if I knew how to darn the crutch of a pair of tights. Now when I was telling my friend about it, she said, oh, it's not very sexy as it is. And I said, no, it might not be very sexy, but guess what? It's a very economical skill to have in your wardrobe toolbox. So I'm here to help you, Zoe, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also show you how to mend or darn a pair of socks. And don't you just hate it when, you know, the toe goes through, your, hold on, I'll turn that inside, when your toe, it's always your toe, isn't it? It's your toenail's too long and it forms a hole in your sock. And I think that it's such a waste when, like nowadays what we do is if something like that happens, you just chuck it out. Well, you know what, there's still lots of wear in those socks. And I just think, well, why waste? You know, that's what's wrong with the world. But anyway, darning is a skill that my nan taught me and it was something that my mother used to do on a Sunday night. And I just think that it's a skill that needs to be brought back. So for those of you who don't think this is a very sexy thing to be demonstrating, well, I'm very sorry, but let's not waste. Okay, so Zoe, I've got a pair of tights here. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was having a merry quaunt period of my life when I had these. Oh goodness me, but uh, I haven't worn them for a long time and but at least they've got a crutch in them and at least we can use this as a little exa a little um, an example of how to how to fix them. So normally uh, the the crutch will go around here somewhere. Unfortunately these haven't gone and I'm not going to put a hole in them just to prove a point. But First things first, the first thing you need to do is to turn your tights, even if you've got a hole in the foot, you can still fix those. Now, you can turn them inside out. Hold on, where's my other one here? Get that inside out because that's the best way to do it because you don't want to see your stitching from one side. Now, if you can, you can, this here is a thing that you, I don't know what it's called. I could, it's a, sort of like a darning mushroom to me. That's what it looks like. Um, you can buy bigger ones than these. This is all I had in the cupboard, so that'll just have to do for now. Now, you also need special needles, and you can buy needles that are called um, darning needles. The difference between a darning needle, well, a darning needle and a needle that you would use to sew buttons on is this has got a slightly rounded edge on it um, so that it's easier to go through the fabric. That It's not as sharp as um, an ordinary needle. Um, but there's more to that. Than, we don't need to know about that. You just buy a darning needle. Now, the other thing is you can buy cotton or you can buy wool. I actually prefer to use the wool because it's softer than using um, anything else. And I'm just assuming that um, Zoe, is it Zoe? Yes, it is. Zoe, your tights are woolen, so let's just use wool. And for today's purpose, I'm going to use yellow because I need you to see what I'm doing. Now, you can either buy this really lovely fine thread which is about two or three strand or you can just use ordinary wool and I'll cut that off there I have to put my glasses on now because I can't see but anyway when you get into the wool it's probably now what strand did that say that was usually on the side it will say it's like eight, eight ply eight ply means that there's eight little bits of wool that have all been spun around to create the eight strands or the Yes, yeah, so each of these little things here, see that there, that is, that is a strand, that one thing there. So you can just, so in here, there is eight, and I've just removed one possibly. Let me just see, you know, that's just one strand into there. Now, um, the other little tip I need to tell you is don't use really long bits of, of wool because it will just make it too difficult. The reason... Um, I've taken away the strands is I don't need all that thick eight strands I only need maybe one or two for the purpose of what we're doing today so getting my needle and I need to put my glass on because I can't see getting my darning needle and you'll also notice that it's got you might not be able to see that but if I do that way there it's got quite a big hole there and that's been um, designed so that you can get a decent bit of wool through there right cut that to the length because you matching matching but to show you what I'm doing let's just make sure it's yellow so just take that through to there and pull it through now I'm not going to knot the end because 
I don't want a knotty bit near my crutch, all right? So when you get into here, you'll notice that when the manufacturer has made these, they've actually gone over and over and over. Um, yes, they have, yeah, they have. They've gone over and over and over. So that's what we're going to do. So say my, my holes there, um, getting your hand into there like that, pull the fabric out like so, and then it's just a matter of taking your thread through, and then what I like to do is take that thread back there so that it actually gets sewn into the, sew it back into that seam there. It's gonna be a little bit thick, but not too much. So it's just tiny, tiny little stitches like so, pull that bit out there, take that bit through to there, and pull that through there, pull it tighter again, and then take that to there, and then, once you've gone all one way, just like a crisscross, go back the other way, like so, to, make like a series of little crosses just through there like that and putting that to there like so so that that's the, that side and that side are all joined together and by doing it pulling it just a little bit like that it just means that you're going to have a little bit of give because these stitches here as they've be, it's been overlocked or well like a zigzag what's actually happening there is is actually movement so you don't want to do this too tight so just by putting um, your hand under there and stretching that out it means that there is going to be a little bit of give then once you get to that end there just take that through all the way through to there and then cut that off. So now when you put it on, that's going to have a little bit of movement and it's not going to rip. The other thing that you can do is you could put a little bit of nail polish on it if it's starting to run, but I'm just assuming, Zoe, that they are woolen tights and that that, um, so wall to wall, bit of give and the wonderful thing about wool is that it does have a little bit of stretch in those fibres. So there you have stitching and darning the crutch of a pair of tights. Easy, easy peasy. Right, let's move on here to the sock. Make sure that it is the right, yes, it's on the right, wrong side. Now, I'll get another bit of, I'll use yellow this time again so that you can see what I'm doing. I just love these. This is such a great skill to have, and I just am really left really sad that these are skills that are being lost. Now, okay, no knot again. Thread that up. I don't want that knotty bit. Take that bit out. I don't want a knotty bit under your foot. Oh, crikey. No, 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 no. Okay, so where's my sock? There it is inside out because we want that stitching on the inside now this is going to be underneath the ball of the foot and you do not want to have any harsh bits there that could possibly be annoying you now you can either use your hand or and I can see where that has come away see that there so it's all starting to run from there and across to there so you can either use your sock mushroom oh. And put that down into there like so. Now, there you go. See how the sock mushroom works? And we don't want to pull that too far apart, but this is, and to do this, it's like an under and over. So going through there, just like so, and taking that through to there like that. And don't do anything with that little bit there. Oh yes I will, I'll do that now. We'll have a longer bit there. So we're going to bring that to there and then catching from that side there up and under and over and taking that through and up and over to the other side. Oops, what's happening here? Whoops, I pulled that too tight. Yeah, I don't want that to be too tight at this stage. And then once you get to there, repeat that process and of course it's not a woolen sock is it no it's not it's a not it's got nylon in it from there again lifting a little couple of threads out there taking that through to there like so 
and then we're repeating that process there up and under and over that thread and then let's just do the same in fact I might just pull that just a little bit tighter there but not too tight okay and then once you get to the other end it's just a matter of going under and over under and over to reach the other end so I've gone this way and now I'm going this way pull that through there like so and then turning that around and repeating that process by going under and over and under and over to reach the other end like so and as I said you're best not to have so see what's happening there so it can, can you see that little I'm making sort of like it's almost like a weaving process to cover that hole and mend that together so that's one way that you can do it and to, then once you get to, so not off uh, just close off those areas like so this should be a little bit neater but never mind that's just to give you the idea so that when you turn it inside I actually prefer to use my hand I find it much easier so when you turn it to the other side, if you had used the right fabric, so once you've done that way, then what I would do is I would repeat on the other side there to get that looking nice and neat. Now the other thing you can do is, I think it's on this one here. Yes, here it is. See, I'd rather just use my hand because I find it much easier. So you've got a little, that little hole there. See that little hole there? Right, turning that inside out. And this is when you can just use the same technique as we used. See the hand is hand's so much better. So just get a wee fist into there. And then with this one here, it's just a matter of under and over again. And then just bring that little thread there to there and hold it in your hand like that. That's why the mushroom's great for big things, but honestly, my hand is much better at doing this. And then it's just a matter of running that through there. Don't do it too tight. And then just bringing those two bits together. And for what it's worth, let me just tell you that I should have just taken another strand out of that little bit of yarn there. But just bring that together like so. Just gently bringing those, the two sides together. Don't do it too tight, like so. And then what I do is I just run that there through and then to knot it off, just bring that through like that and then through there to there and then knot it off. But you don't want any, as I said, I keep having to say this, it is, and take that, and that bit there, that thread bit there, if you don't want that to run, just do the same thing again. Take that through to there. This is when you've got to be a contortionist. Take that to there and put that into there like so. And then bring that through to there and then cut that bit off and then make sure it's not too thick and heavy and I know that that's thick and heavy because as I said I should have just taken another strand out but then bring that through and does it move you see how it moves it still moves because it's not too tight and if I had used the red thread you wouldn't have even seen those stitches it's not really really neat as neat as I would like it but hey it's another couple of wears out of a pair of socks that aren't going to be going to the landfill. So there you have two ways of darning a pair of socks and an unsexy how to fix the crutch of your tights. So I hope Zoe that I have been of assistance. I'd really like it if you could have been here and I'm thinking we need to get into Skyping so that I can do demonstrations and do one-on-ones. But anyway that's going to have to keep for now. Um, if there's anything that I can help you with, please don't hesitate. Drop me a Gmail and I, am go I will endeavour to help where possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you another day. Thank you.